All right, we are going to announce a winner for simple items. We're doing a giveaway for simple house interiors on this video. And we are also going to get the death animation working on the enemy. So when he runs into the house, we're going to be able to attack him and then he's going to die completely. So let me get the sword and go attack him. And remember to put a comment below if you want to enter into the giveaway for simple house interiors. That's the pack that I used to make to make uh, the inside of this house. Let's attack this guy. There we go. I attacked him. He's falling to the ground. And he's not getting back up. The next thing, the next thing that's going on is all these pumpkins are getting launched out of the catapult. And the last man standing is going to win simple items from Cinti Studios. All right, no more of the rolling the balls around to announce a winner. We're going to actually get into something exciting here. Now, I'm using the Cinti Studios Simple uh, Fantasy huge collection of low poly models so anyways i'm using the simple fantasy there's a link to that in the description click the link check it out and we're announcing a winner for simple items in the previous video uh if you put a comment in the video you were entered into the giveaway and that means your name is right here and you're gonna be spawned when we start the game so when we start it up it's gonna spawn a bunch of knights and that's everybody uh who's entered into the giveaway and then it's going to start, catapults are going to start spawning, uh, throwing pumpkins at you, and the last man standing wins. Now, we've already gone over basically how this works, but there's been a couple new scripts added uh, on the game controller now. We have the grid size, gap X and gap Z, and a uh, function to put the children into a grid. There's actually a separate tutorial on my vi uh, channel. There's a link to that tutorial below. It's a tutorial on editor scripting and how to put a bunch of uh, game objects into a grid. So that's where I got this little function from actually to put the, the players in the into a grid. And uh, so first thing it does is it shuffles the array so that the uh, order of which you're spawned in is completely random. And that function is right here, shuffle array. You can see how that works. And then after that, it uh, d puts each child into, a, a puts the players into a grid and it, it spawns the players. And the catapult has a game object here called pumpkin Sp spawner at the back of it with a pumpkin spawner script. And the pumpkin spawner script is this. It just has a, a pumpkin that it spawns, how long it should take, to spawn one and then a timer the timer it uh, does a timer and when the timer's up it spawns a pumpkin and the pumpkin you can see here this is where the pumpkin's uh force is is random so it adds a force between a random range of 800 and 3800 and i've done some testing here to figure out the best values but basically 800 is right here and 3800 is at the back so it's it's ran your not only is your spawn position random but also the pumpkins that are being thrown at you are, are coming at you at a random uh, at a random place. Either they're gonna hit about here or they'll hit about here at the back of the at the back of the pack. Now while the pumpkin is flying through the air, it has a script on it called pumpkin bomb and it also has a particle effect as a child. But the pumpkin bomb script here um, all that does is it has a rigid body, a boolean, whether it's been exploded or not, and then a game object for the particle effect, and uh, it finds those two. And then when it, uh, when the on collision enters, so as soon as the pumpkin hits something, it does the, uh, it adds an explosion force, and then it says it's exploded is true. That way, when the next on collision enter happens, it doesn't explode multiple times. Um, and then it sets the transform parent, the explosion parent to null, so the the explosion doesn't roll with the pumpkin. And then it turns on the explosion, so that plays the particle effect. And other than that, the rest of uh, these are pretty much um, the same scripts as before. So let's hit play. And uh, last man standing is going to win a copy of simple items. From Cinti Studios here. 
let's uh, let's zoom in real quick so that you can get a chance to look and see your name. That way you can watch as uh, as this goes down. You can you can see which guy you are if you're gonna win or not. All right, here we go. We got a chance to see where everybody's at. Let's on pause this. And last man standing wins. All right, everyone's safe. No, we got two two people taken down already. Three or four are out. This isn't gonna last long. It is a pretty brutal battle down here. Who's left standing? We got we got one in the front. Nope, we don't. No, nope, we none in the front. Three guys left. Who's gonna win this thing? Three still standing. Now we're down to two. Jonathan, Jonathan just got hit in the head. It looks like Lester Delinea is the winner. Last man standing. And he's still standing now. Congratulations, Lester. You are the ultimate knight when it comes to pumpkin catapult battles. Still still hasn't got killed down here. Surrounded, <laughs> surrounded by death and pumpkins. Alright, well if Lester's not gonna go down, we might as well get on with uh, get on with the tutorial. Remember, put a comment below if you want to enter into the next giveaway. In the next video, Lester's got taken down. Oh, everybody is dead. In the next video, we are going to give away a copy of Simple House Interiors. All right, here we go. In the previous video, we, we got it so where we could uh, pick up, for one, open up a drawer for some object interaction. And... We can also pick up items like the sword. The robber has entered into the house. And because we have the sword, it's showing the... I got a little close there. But it's showing the uh, gaze interaction uh, icon here for the attack. So we can attack, but nothing happens. All right, let's make this guy fall down dead if he gets attacked by the player so he can shoot us but we can attack him with our sword and kill him right now he has uh, animator for uh, locomotion locomotion is a blend tree one of these and we can see we've gone into the blend tree here. It goes between idle and walk. If he gets killed, that's going to be a new state completely. And he'll leave the locomotion state. And there should be a death. Simple people animations. Dead, one, two death okay we'll go for death zero one and we could call state death zero one we need to make a transition from locomotion to death and that should be the end of the animation after the game will be complete, completely reloaded before it goes into the dead, into the death animation. Okay, we just need a trigger or a bool. We'll do it. We'll do a bool, and the reason why is because triggers, if your code. If your code happens to call, happens to call, run twice, and it sets two triggers, it'll set it once, and it will make the transition. 
and basically if it's during the update while it's making that transition it could set it again and in that case if it ever comes back into locomotion it would immediately go to the death again because this trigger this trigger was waiting so sometimes I prefer to use bulls uh, especially if you're using code that is running update or fixed update uh, that way it's either true or false and when you set it to death true it's it just stays that way and and you don't accidentally get the trigger triggered again so maybe that's just a problem of my own where I need to I need to code it better so that if it's a trigger it only runs that code one time because that's the way that they're built anyways let's let's get this thing working we got the robber controller obviously we need to open up that and we just need a, some condition we already got the death on the trigger so let's set that real quick on this arrow we'll say conditions death is going to be true and there's no way to even get back so it doesn't matter there if it's a trigger or a bull really so in the robber controller uh, he falls we need to make him do this there's shoot gun that's that's for the robber shooting the gun there's restart level we got the game controller attack target I think that's where we're gonna be at because attack target is on this item that's on his back right here there we go attack target and when the player when you click on that it does a game control player attack target all right so go over here to game control we got player attack target all right now we're gonna want to play the death animation and the death animation I don't think we got we got all the robbers but that doesn't really help us the robber controller really is the thing that has the animator <clears throat> my anim so I think I'll make a new public void I guess let's just call it death and robber die okay so we got the f uh, public function we just need a my anim dot set bool not set bone set bool uh, it's called death and true We, we're gonna have to figure out it's gonna be easier to do it from the attack target because the attack target is is a child of, of that game object so we could say transform dot root because <clears throat> transform this is this is our transform the root is all the way up here, which is going to be this guy, which is where the robber controller is at. Let's say transform.root.getComponents. We want to get the robber controller. And I want to... I could save that into a var like this. And we need to call the function robber die.
let's see if it works. I don't, uh, I think, I think I'm going to, I think we need to add a delay there so that Because he's gonna, he's gonna play his death animation too fast, I believe, before, before the sword even swings. Oh, that was that was pretty good. And he's shooting me. Great. We forgot. We forgot to, to. We forgot to take the gun away from him. He, he said, "You're gonna stab me in the back. I'm shooting you on the way down." All right. So I was wrong. I, I don't remember using the exit, or maybe if I did, I quit using it for the same reason, but uh, I, I figured if I went to the exit that it would just, it would be done with all animations and it would be over, but it, it doesn't. It goes right back to entry and it comes back into here. So that's, that's probably the reason why I've never ended up using exit. Uh, but yeah, after, if you go to exit, it's going to go right back into entry, and this will be a big loop. So I'll, I need to delete this condition, and I want the death animation to play, and it's just going to play and be over with. Because if we look at this in the pro in the project, there should be no loop. So loop time turned off. So. The death animation should play to the end, and it should be over uh, if we set it up like this. And in that case, it almost makes more sense to use a trigger because um, I, I really don't know if it's going to matter in memory, but it seems... It seems like this is going to have to hold a boolean in memory that's not necessary. Whereas the trigger just gets set once and then it'll be stuck here forever and it can't it can never get away from the death animation anyways. So here we need to do a set uh set trigger death. Honestly, it probably it, there's just it doesn't matter should stop worrying about it all right let's try that one more time he should he's still he's still gonna shoot us because we haven't turned off his ability his ability to kill us if he sees but i just want to see if the yeah, he play, he plays the death animation and and we don't want him to do any of that uh, any of the looking looking for the player. The nav uh, we got a set float on the navigation agent. We got the look target. So I'll probably just use a private bool. Um, dead. And in the update, let's just say if dead. Is true. We'll do all the stuff that he should do when he's when he's alive and we'll have to set a bool now it's getting to the point where we should really go to the robber controller and write a death function we already got one so set trigger death
and in here let's do a dead equals true I gotta wait for a second because if I run out there he's gonna shoot me well that's well that's new well I don't know what I was thinking I said if dead if you if dead is true it's not gonna do anything if dead is false He should be doing all that stuff. All right, here we go. He should run in. Let's get the weapon, and, and this guy should fall down and not kill me. He's still shooting me. Why is he doing that? It's got to be that eyesight. That eyesight target. If I go all the way to the head on the this one, yep, he's got the ice robber eyesight, and that one is watching for the player and trying to kill me. So I just need to turn this uh, game object off. So I'm gonna copy that and let's just run over to the. Robber ice, no, no, robber controller. I'm going to pin that next to game controller so that I have an order here that works good. And, and when it starts, we need to find the eyesight object. So the lowercase d transform, and I want to type in find. And so here, the only way I can do is find and find child find child is actually depreciated so I have to do a transform dot find string name now we're gonna be back into here where we got this whole thing going on so I gotta go I gotta start with this one and go all the way up into the chest And then after the chest, spine joint, spine joint one, chest, it's going to be the neck. And I'm going to control C and control V. That way I don't have to have a typo. Now if I duplicate this, it'll always find the one that's specific to the as as this child for each one all right now I just got to say what I'm trying to find I, I'm trying to find a I need a variable for the game object I'm gonna call it a uh, private that's let's just say robber eyesight that robber eyesight is a script name though so um, the uh, it's called the collision eyesight so let's say eyesight collider I guess that's the best eyesight because uh, a collider is a is it like a box collider sphere collider so eyesight object an eyesight object is going to be a game object capital G of course okay so cap private game object eyesight object and the eyesight object is this right here. Eyesight object equals transform.find. But transform.find finds a transform. So we got to say dot find, yeah, find this transform, but then give me the game object to go back into this guy because he's a game object. Okay. Now that we have access to the eyesight object, we should be turning that off when. Set active false. 
That way the guy can't kill us. He should fall down dead. And not kill us as he's as he's dying. And I can't do anything without the sword. Alright, sneak up behind him. Attack. He falls down. And I better look for a... We better look for the other death animation because this it doesn't work very good to... We're attacking him from behind and he's falling into us. That's... I want him to fall away from us. Okay, here we go. Much better. And now we need to turn off the target. Okay, we still got the flashing target. And didn't we make a really easy way to turn those off on the robber controller? Because the robber controller keeps a dictionary of all hit targets. So... Actually, what we should do right here is we let's get another private uh, we, we just need to turn the game object off so we'll just get the private uh, hit target object and then down here we can say um, yeah, hit target object is equal to this, which is transform.find the game object, and then hit targets, which is a string game objects dictionary, needs a game object in it. We already have a game object right here on hit target object, so we just need to say move that one into there. So now we still find the hit target and we still add it to this dictionary. But before we do that, we populate this variable so we have access always to our own hit target. Now we could be able to say hit target object dot set active false. And I, you know, we're still gonna have work on these on these enemies and on the player, but seems like we've been working on uh, working on this guy and work for quite a few days. So I'm excited because it looks like a lot of the basic stuff from here. It, it's just polishing things up, making the sword animation look better. Perfect. <laughs> his colliders are still active, so you kind of, you kind, you kind of walk over his body. We don't call nine. <laughs> we don't call nine one one. We, we get our katana out. Oh yeah, we better call nine one one. We need to add a phone in here so that we can, we need to call the cops. All right, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. I, th I think where there won't be a whole lot more work. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, there's, we've, we've been working on this for a lot of days. So it looks like it wouldn't be very hard to we've we've already coded everything right so that if we duplicate this guy everything should work there should be multiple robbers uh we just have to figure out how the game's going to work as far as where they go when they come in the house uh we need a little bit of ai on them to figure out where they're going to where they're going to go to try to uh, steal stuff 
Maybe they'll try to steal the TV. That would be that would be really cool because they uh, that's the main menu. So uh, it would uh, just a funny just a funny concept. The the NPCs in the game come in and take away the take away the main menu. Um, that's gonna wrap up today. The pre previous video went on pretty long, so uh, anyways, we're gonna wrap this one up and stay tuned. Remember to uh, enter in, put a comment down below so that you can get entered into the giveaway for Simple House Interior. We had three codes of Simple House Interior from Cinti Studios, and we already gave one away. In the next video, we're giving away the second copy of Simple House Interiors. That's the pack I'm using here to make this house. So put a comment down below. Thanks for watching, you guys, and see you in the next video.